Hello everyone, it's Gigabeef here and today we're looking again at efficient kits, this time for patch 14 because a lot has changed on weapons, ammo and armour. We're going to build three tiers of loadout starting at super budget and move higher in terms of trader levels and cost as we go through. So let's begin with the most basic but usable build. Alright, so as I've said for previous videos of this type, this type of video is supposed to get you thinking about the ways to build loadouts. So don't necessarily just copy me exactly. And the changes that we're having in patch 14 make loadout building quite different to the way they used to be. The ammo restrictions now are much harder than they were. But the interesting flip side of that is that the weapon choice is now a little bit broader. In the last time that we did this for patch 30.5, I recommended shotguns, but obviously I'm on my level 1 account at the moment that doesn't have access to Jaeger, so the only shotgun that you can buy is from Peacekeeper, which is the 590A1, the Mossberg. This is a pump action, and I've just kind of gone off shotguns a little bit in general for this wipe. Not necessarily because they're bad, because, you know, with the new armor system, when you're wearing a Packer, say, for example, on your actual character, you still do have the sides of your chest exposed. So if you get this shot by a shotgun, then you will die if it's underneath this armpit area. But the main difference is that a lot of the other guns, the recoil, is significantly lower than it used to be and so those weapons on recoil have been buffed with shotguns feel kind of about the same. Shotguns aren't really any worse than they were but everything else has kind of got better around it so that's why I'm not thinking about shotguns so much right at the beginning and instead we're going to focus on a kit using the SKS. The SKS I think has got really good this wipe, you can buy it from Prapper 1 for 30,000 rubles and I have one here that I just bought a second ago. What makes this so good is that if we do a link search on this, and we're going to be using the flea market interface a lot by the way because I think it's very very useful, especially for players under the flea market ironically because you can actually see everything that you can buy easily in one place without having to flick from trader to trader. So this is the ammo selection for the SKS and as you can see this wipe it is very very limited, the only thing that we have access to is 762 by 39 SP. The thing about SP is that it has 68 damage and 20 pen and the beauty of 20 pen is that on all of these class 2 armors it's going to go straight through because the soft armor is only class 2. And interestingly if we go to some of these staple armors that we'll look at a little bit later like the 6B13, yes they may have plates here in the back that are class 4 and plate in the front that's class 4 but this area around the bottom, this area around the sides is all class 2 because this is the actual thorax hitbox as you can see down here. Only the front plate and the back plate are protected at a higher level, everything else is class 2 as it says here. So with 762 SP, you're actually going to be able to go through most people's armors so long as you don't hit them directly on the plate, which is pretty good for a level 1 gun. Another big benefit of the SKS is that you can load the bullets in straight from your pockets. So if you equip this here and then you put this in your pockets like that, then the SP can be loaded straight into the SKS without having detachable magazines or anything like that. You can do both with the SKS and if you want to have more than 10 rounds as well, you can take out the internal magazine and you can put in the 20 rounder, which is found on Peacekeeper. If we go and filter by item you can see it's here on peacekeeper there is a barter for one on skier as well this is 70 dollars which is quite a lot actually this is about 10k but if you want 20 instead of 10 in there then that's what you've got to do this will work exactly the same only having one mag means that you'll be able to load it directly from your pockets rather than having to swap magazines so it means you don't necessarily need a rig the other interesting choice starting out from this wipe is that a lot of people used to use the mosin previously but if you see a level one account can't actually buy any of the ammo at all there's no ammo available for the Mosin. And that's another thing that makes me think that the SKS is pretty powerful. Until you've got a couple of quests done and you've got a few trade levels or maybe you've actually gone into raid and found some, you can't actually use the Mosin. So the SKS is probably the next best thing. Now in this very limited gear set that we're going to look at first off, I always think it's worth wearing a balaclava just because it hides your head a little bit. The visibility difference between not having one and having one is quite a lot and it is much easier to see and shoot at somebody's head when they're making their target obvious by having lots of shiny skin on there. So I always advise using one of those. Then I think everybody should be wearing a headset in every raid. You really only have two choices at the beginning. If we go and look at all headsets over on the flea market, you can choose either the GSSH or the Opsman M32. The M32 is better than the GSSH, but clearly it is quite a bit more expensive. So it is up to you as to which you use. I prefer the sound profile on the M32s. Maybe in the first couple of raids, I might use the GSSH just in case something goes really badly wrong. But to me, the M32s sound a lot better than the GSSH. Now, headsets, this wipe are kind of interesting. There's been lots of discussion and conversation around headsets, and they do have a range difference on them, despite the earlier rumors that they might not. It depends on where you test them, to be honest. But Omni Actual, who did the very first headset video, came out with a new list updated, which is basically exactly the same. But he also discovered something very interesting, which is that headsets only seem to increase the range of your hearing directly from the front. Behind, it's as if you're not wearing a headset at all in terms of range. I'll throw up the headset range table on here so that you can see and the M32s have a slight advantage over the GSSH but on this it's more about cancelling out that ambient background noise which is the other half of the active headsets in Tarkov i.e. the wind noises and the whistling and all of that ambient sound that kind of low rumbling that is just constant in Tarkov so the M32s are slightly better on that than the GSSH. 
Next up, we're going to pick a piece of armor. Now, there are two types of armor in Tarkov, as I'm sure you're aware. You have rigs. When you're at level one, you don't have access to any armored rigs whatsoever. So that actually makes it slightly easier. If we move over to body armor, there are only three that are in cash. This is the classic three, the 6B2, the module 3M, and the Packer Soft Armor. The Packer Soft Armor and the module 3M both have side protection with a bit of Aramid, and the 6B2 does not. I still think that this is probably worth buying because it's just so cheap. You could go for this one if you wanted to, especially with all the snow at the moment. It's actually probably not a bad idea because normally the camouflage on this is what stops people from buying it. I think the pack is probably not really worth it. It is technically the best out of the three, but you're going to be wanting to move up and upgrade to better stuff in raid, find scavs with better armor on rather than keeping these on all the time. So I just like pick up whichever throwaway it is to stop me getting buckshotted from the front and then try to get something better in raid. So onto the quick meds. The most basic loadout that you really want is some kind of heal, a heavy bleed item, a light bleed item, and a splint to start off with. I always use the cat over these S marches because the cats you could buy from Peacekeeper that starts to level Peacekeeper's money spent, which is quite useful. And these only have a three second use time, whereas the S marches have a five second use time. When you're trying to heal a heavy bleed in the moment, it does feel like quite a big difference between the two. And I have used both relatively recently because I just kind of had a few of these and just used them as throwaway. But it is worth buying the cats from Peacekeeper instead. They're really about the same price, honestly. And it's just so much faster to heal that you may as well do it that way. From here, you need a splint so that you can fix your fractures, but this isn't everything you need. You need one extra piece because you either need to take with you a CMS so you can fix black limbs, or you need to take painkillers of some kind. And this is because if you get a limb blacked, you won't be able to walk anymore. And getting out of a raid with a black limb is really, really hard. So you either need to be able to fix the problem completely with the CMS, you only get a limited number of these when you begin, or having painkillers enough to get you out of the raid. I would advise taking the longest painkiller that you have available. So the Vaselines, for example, these have a 300 second use time and you get six of them in a stack. So you could use that. Or alternatively, as I said, you just use the CMS. So it depends on whether you actually have these or not, because you may use them all up and you might not be able to get any more before you get to the flea market. This would leave you with an, a spare space to put in a stack of bullets or a key or something like that. If you don't have anything else to put in there, sure, you can take both if you really, really want to. Or potentially even something bigger like an AFAC or an IFAC. I'm not sure if I have any in this starting ladder. There we go. I do have an AFAC. So you could use an AFAC here so that you don't end up losing an AFAC every time you die. But you can supplement your AI2 with the AFAC here. Because you can go and buy AI2s from Therapist at the moment, but you won't be able to buy AFACs until a lot later. But this gives you 400 HP in one slot, which is pretty powerful. Now, I do want to mention I have a hotkeys video that allows you to hotkey both of these items to the same key. What this will do is repair a heavy bleed if you have one. If you don't have a heavy bleed, then it'll heal your HP. This doesn't do all three because this is really designed for a higher tier of medkit, but it's something that's useful. Go and watch the video if you're interested. There's loads of cool and useful hotkeys in that video, so I think you'll find it handy if you haven't seen it already. One thing to note about painkillers is that you can get away with longer term painkillers these days because the painkiller effect has been changed from the blurry mess that it was before around the side to a desaturation effect, which is a lot better to look at. You can still see people in your peripheral vision, so I don't feel like you're hampering yourself anymore. By having those long term painkillers, it's really not as problematic. I'm still kind of favoring the shorter ones so I don't have this desaturation because you do lose some color information in the sides, but it's much more bearable than it used to be. So this is probably the bare minimum loadout that you can go in with and actually be relatively successful. Obviously, you probably want to take some more stuff with you like a bag. So let's go and have a look at the bags that are available. This has been limited a lot, this wipe, for some reason. I'm not entirely sure why. You're more incentivized to go out and find them in the actual raid. But we really only have three choices now. The sling bag, the VKBO army bag, and the transformer bag. Of these three, I would just buy the biggest one, the transformer bag. This is three by three. It's not a very big bag and it doesn't cost that much either. So we'll just go and buy this one if we don't have anything else. Obviously, if you have another bag like, you know, a day pack or something then try to use that so you can fill it with loot and progress failing that the tea bag is probably the best of the bunch that you can actually buy in terms of rigs yes again you get some stuff to start with but if you've run out or you don't have any or you need to buy something brand new then you've got a couple of choices here so there's a few you've got all the ones from the little zulu which is only six slots you've got the spiritus bank robber which is all right the Wartech, which is 10 slots which is quite nice with a two by two and the chai Com as well which is 10 slots but split up a bit more the one that i like is this csa I think the CSA is really, really good. This one is also 10 slots, except it doesn't have a 2x2 two two and it's in a sort of funny format, which normally is the sort of thing that allows you to take like 3x1 items, like a 45 round mag. But the beauty of the CSA is that it's very small. So when you buy it and you put it inside your bag, it's only six slots, whereas it has 10 inside. So you can put this on here. And what you can do is you can go out into raid. You can kill a scav. You can find them. You can put on their rig and then you can keep your loot items in your CSA. And you can amplify your rig space by an extra two thirds because you now have 10 slots in this space rather than the six that you had originally, which is pretty neat. 
Also, as an honorable mention, we've said about the SKS and I've pretty much showcased it as like the only starting gun, but clearly there's a lot of weapons that you could use to begin with. But once you have a rig, then you have a lot more choices because you can use weapons to take magazines. First one that I want to mention from here is the PP-19 because you can buy 30 round mags right from the start. Both bear and USEC start with a ton. You get M882 as a USEC and you get PST as a bear, but both are totally usable and the PP-19 has very low recoil. Pretty much all the guns have very low recoil now, so all guns feel quite good in patch 14, which is a big, big win. The PP-19 is especially low on recoil with a 42 start and the low RPM as well makes it very controllable and given that you can buy the 30s then you're not going to run out of ammo either. It feels very competitive. It also has a dovetail rail as well so you can actually stick on like a dovetail scope for example. If we go to sites here on the flea market interface you can get the Axion Cobra which I don't think is too bad at all. This one hits your ergonomics by three but if you link search this one as well there's also a site shade that puts it back up by three. This only costs 109 rubles so do it. This is a no-brainer. The other weapon that I think is pretty cool early on if you don't have much else is the Kedder. This is very, very cheap. You can't buy the 30s. You can only buy 20 round magazines. If we go to a linked search again, you can see you can only get this 20 round magazine from Prapor and a 30 rounder with a barter. I wouldn't bother doing this, but this is fine. You get a 30 rounder in the actual gun. If you want it to be really tricky, you just buy like two of these and then sell one of them and then keep two 30s if you really wanted to be finicky about it. But the beauty of the Keda is the recoil is pretty low, but the fire rate is really high and 900 RPM. This is really a face tapper. The bullets aren't as good as for the PP-19, but as you can see here, there's quite a few that you can buy. And RG028 is okay. I mean, this one has 65 damage and 13 pen, so it struggles to get through the soft armor a little bit, which is why it's more of a face tapper than the PP-19, which can get around the soft armor because it has 18 pen on M882 and 20 pen on PST. I don't want to spend too long talking about guns because I've already done that already in a different video. But the other two mentions once you've played a couple of raids is the 74U because this now has a new rail on Skier called the Pilgrim Rail which you can get from him and that allows you to attach any red dot that you like that mounts on a normal Picatinny rail. And the other one is the Peacekeeper Org A1 which the scope is much better now because of the way that recoil has been fixed. The reason why I mentioned these two is that if you start off as USEC, you have lots and lots and lots of M855 ammo, and that will work really well in the org. USEC starts with lots and lots and lots of M855 ammo, which means that you won't have to worry about trying to find high pen ammo in raid, because 30 pen is actually pretty reasonable these days with the way the armor system works. Fortunately, you can only buy 10 rounders to back up the org, so you've got the 30 in the gun itself, which is good, and outside of that you're a bit stuck, but M855 is really decent and you can use the org if you want to use some of that. And then on the AK side, you start off with a lot of PS ammo, which is why I think the 74U is probably better for bears, because this one you can actually buy the 30 rounders. It's actually a little bit better than on the USEC side, but obviously you don't get an optic, but you can do the Pilgrim Rail thing if you want to. So that's a good way of using up ammunition that you get in your starting stash if you haven't run out of it already and you don't want to buy something completely from scratch. All right, I've switched back over to my main account. So now we're going to look at the next level of progression, which is basically around tier two traders and the flea market, that kind of area. Weapons wise, this is where it gets kind of awkward in terms of ammunition, because because the ammo that you can get from the traders for a lot of the weapons that you kind of want to use isn't really that good. So for example, 556, you can get Warmageddon, FMJ, and M856, none of which are really that decent. And then from Prapor, for example, you can only get T rounds for 545 or maybe FMJ, and all of these are well below 30 penetration, so it makes it a little tough. For bullets that you can actually buy from the traders, Jaegers is honestly probably one of the better ones. TKM EKO is a really, really good bullet. This has 73 damage and 30 pen. Unfortunately, it only goes in the VPO 136 and the 209. But the 209 is AK like, and if you could deal with the semi auto, the recoil has been reduced a lot on this weapon. Although I haven't actually really used it myself that much this white, but it's a potential if you want to buy everything from the traders directly. I personally have been using a combination of continuing the 74U from Prapor and also moving up to the G36, which is what we're going to use on this one, but it doesn't really matter which weapon you use for the overall loadout build. What I've been doing though for this in particular is if you run out of M855, you can buy that from the fleet and SOST you can buy from the fleet as well. And these are all in the 30s, so SOST has 33 pen and 55 damage, whereas M855 has 31 pen and 57 damage. This is very similar to the AK platform where you can buy PS off the fleet and also buy PP off the fleet. And so those two things are kind of analogous depending on whether you're going 545 or 556. Again, it probably makes sense more so whether you're a bear or USEC and if you've got bullets left over from the first 15 levels. But the first thing I want to talk about at this point is armor, because I think armor is very important. It also depends on whether we are able to use a rig or not. So interesting ones here are the press, which as we know in the past was bugged, but it has been fixed. If we go to see the press armor, there is a barter on skier, which is for a horse and a pompon. So you can always go and check to see if this is worth doing. Otherwise, you could just buy them from the fleet really, really cheaply. So if you just go and buy any of these press armors, it doesn't really matter which one. You can see that this is one of the first armors that comes with modular plates. Now, this one comes with class three plates, front and back, which I don't think are particularly good. And the interesting part is that once you're at the flea market, 
you could go and upgrade this and buy something a little bit better. You could go and get this, the 6B33 ballistic plate front. And this one is really, really quite cheap. As you can see, you can buy pretty much a brand new one there for 20K. And because of this diamond shape, this matches the same as the Juk 3 front here. This is the same thing. So you can stick this in the press armor there. Now, do note that only these diamond ones fit in the front of the press. You cannot take these types, which is the sappy style. You cannot put that in the front. The press is, is weird because it takes a Russian front plate and a Western style back plate. That's kind of the way that the press armor functions. But you can go and upgrade this to class four here. And then again, go link search. We'll go into the gear components and we'll go and look for something that class four in the western style and normally the ones that are quite cheap are the monocleat which is the lightest one that i quite like so that's only 26k new sphere tech is also pretty cheap you can get access to this later at tier three traders but until then monocleat is one of the better ones because it is nice and light 1.3 kilos so you can go and buy one of those and that will then go in the back of the press once you take out the class three once you're at level two traders there's no real need to keep the class three armors you may as well just make this thing at class four the best part also about it is that it takes side plates as well there aren't any side plates under class five which is kind of interesting but once you get to peacekeeper three you can put in two class five side plates left and right in the press armor which is really odd so you now have got class five here and here and class four at the front and the back pretty strange but you know it's possible and it's totally doable the press armor also gives you neck and throat protection so if you get shot from the front or the back you have class two so it kind of stops you from getting buckshotted sometimes by scavs but it's not going to save you against players most of the time so this is a viable contender the one that is slightly better is the Karasa. the reason why the Karasa is better is because it has western plates both front and back so rather than having this diamond shaped plate you now have these this is the level three plates that come in it but we could take the back plate out of the Karasa. we could put it in here so that's gone in the front and i've got some other random plates down here as well Go and see which ones I've got. I've got Spartan Omega, which is one of the heaviest steel plates. I don't really like them that much because they're like four kilos, but needless to say, it still goes in the back. Now, the big advantage with this is that say you're running the press and that it gets damaged, you can't really do much about it because if the front plate gets damaged, it's just toasted and that's that. Whereas with the Karasa, if the front plate gets damaged, you could take the back plate out, take the front plate out, put the back plate in the front and the front plate in the back. And now you've got a fresh, assuming that you haven't taken any damage to your back plate, you now have a fresh front plate and the back plate is the one with less protection, but it's behind you. So hopefully you're not getting shot there as much. So the Krasa is probably slightly better than the Zhuk in that way. They both got very similar armor coverage. I think the armor areas are basically the same. The main difference between the Krasa and the Press though is that this one can't take side plates, which yeah, early on it doesn't matter until you get to Peacekeeper 3. And the other difference is the plates because the actual plates are different. These are square at the front and these are diamond shapes at the front of the press and so this one gives you more coverage over your thorax i showed that in my other armor video that you'll actually get less thorax coverage using these eastern style plates whereas the western style plates will give you more thorax but less stomach we care more about the thorax so the karasa is a little bit better than the zhuk in general now there are two other armors that are really easy just to throw on one is the 6b13 and this comes from ragman but you have to complete his quest audit first it's one of these things so again it's the same diamond type plate you can go and buy this directly from ragman himself go and have a look here for 64k and you get the class 4 plate in the front and the class 4 plate in the back this is a special custom plate that only fits into this particular armor but this gives you class 4 front and back and class 2 all around this is a yeah relatively good throwaway armor and allows you to pair it with a different rig as well so you can have more space there once you've completed audit you get this one then the quest after that on the streets is called ballet lover and that one unlocks the ule now i think the ule is incredibly strong it doesn't have any replaceable plates which does mean that you're not going to have those situations where you get shot in the plate and you take literally zero damage because that seems to be the way that the plates work you will take blunt damage because this is all integrated armor but this gives you class 4 everywhere except the neck now it doesn't have side protection on it at all so if you get shot anywhere down the side you will take damage but this side piece all it does is protect the stomach hitbox anyway so you can never protect the side of the thorax or the armpit hitbox there is no armor that helps you protect that really other than maybe going through arms and having shoulder protection but it's a, kind of a niche case especially the early game so you still get this class 2 net protection up here but now you have class 4 across the entire front and the entire back of your body which i think is really strong you also obviously get a rig with it which is pretty good so you don't have to go and bother buying a different rig this might be too small for some people so if that's too small then go for something else go for the 6p13 or one of these the juggle the but I do think that in the kind of early game, this is one of the most powerful armors that you can buy simply because it protects against a lot of stuff. It is very heavy and that's the downside that you take with a lot of negative movement speed. But protection wise, it's very, very good. Now, I said you don't need a rig if you're using this one, but imagine if we do go over to the Karasa or something, then we need to put a rig with it. Now, I'm going to get my favorite rig, which is the one on Jaeger. This is an extremely cheap bar that you get there. The Splav Tarzan, and I've already bought one. It's for some hunting matches right now there. Oh, they're 18K. It's actually quite a lot. Normally you can find these under 10. When they go under 10, I usually buy a couple. I literally just bought this one. That's why I'm so surprised. I just bought this one a minute ago for 7,000 rubles, which is cheaper than all the other rigs that you get at level one from Ragman anyway. So it's the cheapest rig that you can basically buy in the whole game. 
And in here, I tend to put my magazines and all the other stuff. It just gives you a little bit more space than the 6B5. And from here, we're probably going to want to get some bags. Let's go and look through on Ragman himself directly at Ragman 2, because he's pretty much got all the bags that you might want. So he sells the Burkut for 25k. You can get the day pack on Peacekeeper for about the same price. He also sells the Mechanism for 67,000. Mechanism is really big, but obviously that's quite a lot of money. There's also the MVSS at 20k if you really want to min-max it, but it's probably just worth buying the Burkut for an extra 4,000 rubles. And then he's got a couple of other interesting ones. He's got this really long Hazard 4 takedown. Some people like to use this. It's more of a meme than anything else, but maybe this will work in the snow because it's so white at the minute. And the other couple are the Pillbox backpack, which for a horse should be pretty cheap, honestly. It's like 22k. It's about the same price, but this nests slightly better down into certain bags. They won't stack in each other, so there are some restrictions, and I don't like the Hazard 4 because of that. But as you can see, it's only 4x4, four four, so if you put that in another bag, you'll have an extra slot at the bottom so that can be extra efficient the other one that's quite good is this lbt three day bag this one is pretty cheap too because the kaduras are very cheap on the flea market this one sells out quite a lot and this has a lot of space inside more than the others i think if we just go to the inspect view we can see that it's a square of five by five so this has 25 rather than the pillbox and the other ones which are just 20 that's pretty good and then there's one more which is this one the tehincom rkpt25 i think this is cursed honestly i've used this quite a bit and it just keeps coming back in insurance if you want an insurance boomerang over and over and over again then get this thing because this slot size is really awkward a three by three a two by two two three by ones and two two by ones is basically what i realized the equivalent of having a tea bag a sling and one of those csa rigs all strapped together this 3x3 slot at the biggest is a really, really awkward slot to have. Like, it's so tricky. You can't even fit, like, a ULA in. You could fit a press armor, but you can't fit. There's loads of stuff that just won't go in there. Like, various guns won't go in there. It's quite a frustrating bag to use. I ended up using it quite a bit because it kept coming back, and eventually I just sold it because I just didn't like the way it worked. So I think this one's probably the better one, this LBT, but you probably get it taken a bit more often. This thing just comes back eternally on insurance. If you're dying a lot, then maybe it's a worthwhile one to use. For now on our build, I think we're just going to go through Fortley Burkett. Right, as for meds, I'm going to go with my classic staple, the car kit, the two cats, because they have a faster use speed than the hemostats, as we said. I'm going to load them up using my hotkey, and then after that, I'm going to put in a painkiller onto my hotbar, something like this in an analgin, and hotkey that up, so that we have something as we're going along. I think it's probably worth having a slightly longer term painkiller in the gamma if you want. You could do whatever, really. I mean, I think if you go CMS and an alley splint like we did before for alpha containers and then probably a stack of ammunition, you could always swap out the splint, say, because it's less important for another painkiller of some kind, either a single use stim or potentially something else like a Vaseline or a Golden Star or something. If you're up to the gamma, then usually what I do is have the CMS and the alley splint there. I have two stacks of ammo. I'm now taking a dox case and IFAC because I'm using the car kit, you can run out of meds. So it is worth taking an IFAC as well because 5% of raids where you run out of medicine, then you have this extra. Also, it will heal heavy bleeds. It gives you that extra boost just in case you run out or something. It sort of saves you. And then you can put whatever you want in here. Again, you can put like another medical item in there, some kind of painkiller or something. Painkiller is not that bad to use now, so that's not a, not a bad loader. I've been going with propotols quite a bit so that then I can swap them into my hot bar if I like run out or I need to use them super quick. As for the rest of it, relatively simple balaclava. Earpiece, you could use what you like. At this point, you could get something a bit better. Maybe go for the razor or something that's more sort of to the middle of the table. You can see there is quite a big price discrepancy between these various headsets. If you go from something like the M32s, which are very, very cheap, up to the tactical sports, which are kind of in the middle, the razors, which I don't mind either, also kind of in the middle, the XLs, which are a bit better at 50k, and then you look at the Contact 4s, which are now at 130,000. So if you do want your maximum hearing range, Contact 4s is still the best for that. Otherwise, maybe drop down to something like the XLs. And the fast RAC is pretty good too. I just don't really like the audio quality on the RAC, I feel like I can't really hear anything and it only fits on certain helmets. So if you go for the fast RAC headset, you have to fit it to the LZSH or the Fast MT or the TACKEC Fast MT helmet replica. Those are the helmets that it actually fits to. A lot of people just go with the LZSHC to fit that if they want to, but I just don't really like it so much. So we're going to go with the razors for now. And in terms of helmets, there's a very cheap barter for this helmet on Ragman 2. This is two bleaches. This has been like this for all eternity. This costs basically 20k. It's a very easy pickup rather than having nothing at all. So for a slightly more kitted loadout, it really depends on what you have available to you, what weapon you might want to use and that kind of thing. But personally, what I would do if I was running with kind of level two traders with the flea market and trying to increase my survival in raid is I would probably swap out this helmet for a start to go and look at the TC series. Having a helmet is better than none, especially now that everyone's running crappy ammo. But what I like is picking up either of these 2001s or the 2002s. These are pretty cheap. They only cost about 35k and tier four helmets are really powerful right now i'm using these in most raids and this bounces all kinds of crap that people fire at you you know anybody who's using actually the rounds that i'm using right m855 and sost these will actually bounce off the class 4 helmet and are unlikely to penetrate so this can save you quite a lot and it saved me quite a bit 
In terms of armor, I'm actually favoring this at the minute, the Thor. Now the Thor is an interesting one. You can get access to this by completing database part one, and it doesn't have any neck protection, which is slightly awkward. As you can see here, it's just missing. But what it does do is it has left and right plates, which is cool, and it has front and back, so just like the Karasa. But the powerful thing about the Thor is that the soft armor around it is class three. And this stops all sorts of random bullets from coming in and killing you, especially through the sides, because you have protection here and here. Assume you don't have the plates on for a second, you still have left side and right side, which is down the bottom. And again, it is stomach. It's just so much better having class three than class two. And yes, you miss out on the neck protection, but I've absorbed a lot of bullets from this particular armor and it's not that expensive either on the fleet. We're talking about 60K for the base armor, 60, 70,000 rubles. And then you stick in some plates, which as we saw were probably only about 20,000 each. So if you do front and back plate on one of these guys, like right now, it's probably going to cost you about 100. So it's only 40k more than, say, a Yule, and it gives you quite a lot of maneuverability. The debuffs aren't that bad, even considering I've got, you know, a bunch of heavy plates in. These are minus one, and the back plate, you know, you've got all these random debuffs coming through. But the Thor itself is very light on debuffs to begin with. If I take all of this stuff out, it's literally just minus one turn speed. So I like that quite a lot. And I've been using the Thor, and I think it's very, very good. Then we also probably want to get rid of the Analgin Painkillers. Use either an Adrenaline or a Propitol. As I said about Painkillers, it's really up to you as whether you want the active effect to be longer or shorter and go away after a bit. So I've been using an Adrenaline on my hotbar and then I've been using a Propitol down in my secure container like this. I'll swap this out for a Stims case once I get it. I'm very close, I've nearly got a Chemical Part 4. Then I'll have to decide whether to just buy one off the fleet or trade in the two ammo boxes and buy one using the cash. I'm gonna have to see what the prices are at the time. But having an adrenaline on here, this allows you to get out of sticky situations because this is only a two second use time versus the analgins, which are three seconds. Not that big a difference, but you know, when you're getting shot at, a second is a long time. And then outside of this, I'd probably just add a grenade or something, just add at least one. I tend to use grenades for area denial or to like make people move. So if someone's coming at me through a particular angle, you know, just underhand it and then get yourself around cover, that kind of thing. So that's always pretty useful. And other than that, most of the rest of the kit looks pretty much the same at the moment at this kind of level two traders. The final couple of points, I guess, ensure all your stuff. Insurance seems to be extremely cheap right now. Also, when you're repairing, try to repair with mechanic. When I'm repairing with the armor repair kit, it doesn't seem to repair it all the way back to full. At the moment, this is too close to the max, so it won't actually do it at all. But yeah, the armor repair kit seems slightly bugged or whatever. Insurance is coming back now, so you may as well insure everything. And I had a bunch come back the other day, which is pretty nice to see. Other than that, I hope this loadout guide has helped you make sense of patch 14. It is quite confusing with the armor. There's lots of stuff still to test and figure out. I'm trying to understand exactly what the progression is through to the higher tier armors to figure out what is going to be good and what's not going to be good. But at the moment, these ones are the ones that I'm using and that's to come a little bit later because I'm not quite there yet in terms of trader unlocks to actually be able to see what does what. So as usual, a big shout out to all my patrons and as always, have fun in your raids.